Good morning, everyone. First of all, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who have joined me on this journey to learn more about hats and sewing and celebrate really the idea of making your own headwear, creating patterns and designs from your imagination and following along with some of the patterns that I've created over these 36 years in business. So we've reached a milestone and I have to say that I'm humbled and grateful for your support, but we did cross that thousand subscriber line a couple of weeks ago. We're actually closer to 1300 now. So this is something to celebrate and we're going to have a little gift card giveaway and the details will be in the description below. So just leave a comment this week on this video and you'll be entered in the draw which we'll do for the next video. So today we're going to make a fabulous chic rounded top cap that works well with any medium to medium heavyweight fabric. It's great for using up the scraps in your stash which I'm going to do now and you're going to love this hat. Take your time though, it's a little bit more complicated than some of the other projects that we've done to date but it's worth it in the end. You're going to love this cap. So you can make this from new fabrics or you can just use up some of the little bits and pieces that you have left over from other projects. You can do all sorts of embellishments to it, but the shape is awesome. And this is the cap that we're going to make, but in different fabrics, in scraps. You don't need a serger for this project, just a sewing machine will do. So let's go inside. Let's sew ourselves a fabulous scrap happy fashion cap. Yes, folks, this one pattern has made all of these hats in their glorious different representations of different fibers and combinations of colors and textures. So I've used a variety of materials to do these samples. But first we start with the pattern and the pieces are, the, the two lower pieces go with the visor. So we'll call that the visor section. So we need a bottom piece and that can be one color or the same color as the rest. And the insert piece, which again can be something completely different than the rest. We need six pieces for the top and we need six pieces for inside if you choose to line it. Now you do not have to do the lining step if you don't want to. Not putting in the lining will make the hat bigger. So that might be preferable. And then the other piece that we are going to do is we're going to draft a visor section. And it's a, a smaller visor than we've done before because this I feel is more of a fall and winter hat. So something probably that's going to go under a jacket hood on days that are really cold. Now the fabrics that I'm choosing are all different. So this one's a t-shirt material that's quilted. That is a jogging fleece. That's the lining that's called cashew cloth and I'm going to cut it on the bias to make it a little stretchier. So my top is a jogging fleece fabric that's fairly heavyweight in charcoal and it stretches easily in one direction. And I'm going to do a seam allowance of uh, between a quarter inch and three eighths of an inch. If you feel you have a big head, go towards the one quarter. If you feel you have a smaller head than average, go towards the three eighths. Gonna just trim off the tips. And of course I was sewing with the right sides together. So from my six top pieces, I'm going to have four now that are sewn to make two pieces, leaving me two to spare. But first I'm going to do some top stitching. And in the hat industry, you will notice double seams on lots of caps. Usually that means that the, the person doing the production had a double needle sewing machine. I don't have that, so we're gonna fake it. If you have it, by all means, use your double needle. That'll speed things up. So we're just doing a nice tidy top stitch like we've done on lots of my projects so far, including the back seams of all the headbands. And you can wait until the entire top is sewn together and do the this top stitching then. I prefer to do it 
um, in sections like this. So now I'm going to sew one of those extra pieces onto the piece of two to make a piece of three, but it's actually now going to be a piece of one. And I think you can see where this is going. We're going to top stitch. And the goal is, of course, to sew those two pieces of three together and create one top of a cap. And take your time doing this step. Do a nice, neat job. Listen to a podcast or listen to YouTube in the background. Listen to some music. Chill out and get into the top stitching groove. If you choose to line your cap, you're going to do this again. Just an early warning for you. <laughs> Sorry. All right, there we go. We have our top stitching. Now we're going to sew those two pieces together. I'm going to notch the top in the center, and that will probably be right in at the, the top of where the V of the pieces all meet. And we like to have our V from each side meeting at the top in the center. And if you're way out, then just check. Once you've sewn one side together, just turn it over and have a look and see how close you are. You can always take it out and do it again. Not the whole hat, just this step I'm doing right now. And again, I'm going to make a, a seam allowance of between a quarter inch and three eighths of an inch, but I definitely want to make it large enough to, to in, close in that uh, notch that I just made at the top. And I used a pin to help hold those two pieces together in the place that I think is perfect. And now I'm gonna turn it over, start from the top again and go down the other side. And sometimes your pieces might be out at the bottom a little bit, but that might have more to do with just cutting than anything else. So don't fret, you can always trim. So the seam that I just made to join those two sections of three together is going to be a seam that goes from side to side of my cap. So I've notched the front and back because now I have a definite front and back and that front and back is the center of a section and they're directly opposite each other. And if you put the two sides of the side seam together, you would see the two sections that I'm talking about. And I've finished top stitching that long side seam from side to side. I'm going to steam it on my hat block. Look at that. It's a perfect hat block shape. So this is the piece that's going to be just above the visor. Call it the insert. I've just sewn the right sides together. It's quilted so it has a black side and a gray side, but I'm going to use the gray side as my right side and I'm going to notch on each side at the center. And I'm top stitching that seam to make it nice and lovely and flat. And I did the same for the bottom piece, which I'm doing in black fleece. So I'm going to sew a piece of my stabilizer interfacing onto the wrong side of the top of my visor and I'm using a heavy or extra heavy weight sorry extra heavy firm stabilizer and once I've sewn all the way around my visor outline I'm going to get the other two pieces of my visor which is the underside of the visor which I'm using black fleece for and another piece of stabilizer 
right sides together with the stabilizer as the outside pieces of the sandwich. And I'm gonna sew along that long curve, all four layers together. I'm going to leave the inside curve open so that I can turn all of the pieces right side out soon. And right now I'm just gonna trim away this extra and I'll sew another seam inside my tracing line about three eighths of an inch or a centimeter inside. And using my handy magnet measure, now you can clip the notches on those curves. Or what I do is I just finish off that inside seam with my serger. If you have a serger, do that. But you don't need a serger for this hat. So I'm turning my visor right side out and I'm just going to work that seam so that it's even on both sides of that outside edge. And I've set my magnet measure to give me a beautiful top stitch about a half an inch in from the outside edge of the visor or one and a quarter to one and a half centimeters from that outside edge. You don't want a wonky seam on the end of your visor. If you don't have one of these magnets, I really recommend that you get one. It will be your sewing best friend. Mine sure is. And now I'm gonna close off the visor. I'm just gonna sew on top of that outline that I made when I sewed the interfacing onto the top layer of the visor. Trim away the extra. And we're gonna notch the center seam. And I like to do that now because this is a finished piece and so it really is the center. So now we're gonna start creating that visor section of our cap and we start by sewing that insert piece right sides together the right side of the insert to the top of the visor will take about a half a centimeter or a quarter inch seam and we will sew that onto the visor. And the visor is gonna get sandwiched between this piece that we're sewing now and the bottom piece. So we'll make a slightly bigger seam when we sew the bottom piece on. And I usually start in the middle and work out. So that's how this has flipped over and I'm working on the back side of the visor now, still sewing the right sides together. Trimming off those visor points. So I've marked a notch now on my bottom piece on the top and bottom and I'm gonna pin them together where they meet And I'm going to sew the bottom onto the visor and the insert with the visor sandwiched in between. And the, the bottom piece is the right side facing the underneath, the right side of the visor underneath section, if you're following that. Hopefully you can tell from the video what I mean. This quilted t-shirt material is messy, so there's lots of this white fluff everywhere. But now I'm gonna close that visor section by just sewing the raw edges of the bottom and the insert together. And I've matched up the back seams, which are top stitched, and the notches on the front, in the middle of the visor, and in the middle of the insert and the bottom. All those notches should match up, and the back seam should match up. And we're just gonna do um, a very close to the edge 
edge stitch of a quarter inch or, or half a centimeter. And you'll notice as you start sewing that a little part of the bottom piece is wrapping around to the front of the cap. And that is intentional. That is really a nice little comfort feature. So you get an extra little bit uh, that comes down below where the visor sits on your head. So that helps to cover your ears. And it lifts that hard seam from the visor up off of your forehead as well. And now I'm gonna put the top, the right sides together with the visor section. And I'm putting the top on the inside of the visor section. I find it's easier to sew it that way. And I'm matching up the notches again. So I'm taking a bigger seam now. I'm doing about a centimeter or three eighths of an inch. And you could finish at this point if you want to, um, if you don't feel you want lining and you've finished off that top nicely inside, but I'm gonna do the lining and I'm just repeating what I did for the top. So I have six pieces of Kasha Coat Cloth, which is a cotton blend. It's a, it's a heavier uh, lining fabric and I use it for all my winter hats. It's got a nice shine on one side, so it's very nice on your hair. You should be able to find that at any shop. I know it's sold online too. It's very common and it's great lining for hats. You can see the shining side there. And I'm going to do the top stitching. I'm doing it in the gray thread, so you'll be able to see what I'm doing. And it looks nice. So with those six pieces for the top, we're gonna to make two, two section pieces and then we're gonna have a third piece sewn to each two section so that we have two three sections and then sew them together to make one six section, just like we did for the top. Fold it in half. I'm gonna notch at the top where the center is. Match those notches together and sew the two three sections together. So three becomes one. Two times three becomes one. And remember to cut a notch on the bottom center at the front and the bottom center at the back. A pin will hold it while I do that. All right, so now we're gonna put the lining in. We're going to match up the notches, right sides of the lining together on the inside of the cap. We're going to leave an opening at the back because we're going to pull it right side out. And the reason that I do this is because I want the seam, all that seam from the visor to go upwards in the cap, up towards the top of the hat. That leaves that outer top shell of the cap fairly free to be able to you know, smooth down over that insert band. If you want to maybe remove some of the puffiness, 
if you want to push there won't be much puffiness but if you want to push any puffiness to the back and I think it just looks nicer if it looks like it's sort of sitting over the visor band just slightly and pushing that seam up into the top of the hat helps to get that look plus it means you don't need a serger to make this hat if you had a serger you could just sew the lining and the top together wrong sides together and then just sew the whole thing to the visor section of your hat and then use a serger to finish the edge make it a slightly tight serge so it wants to go upwards or press it upward press the seam up into the hat as well All right, now comes the fun part. I'm going to open up that little part I left open and pull the hat out for the big reveal. It's looking good. It's looking great. Now I just have to deal with that raw edge. I'm gonna fold it under. And I'll capture it by just sewing in the insert section on the other side, right up at the very top where the insert is sewn to the top of the hat, but still sewing in the insert section underneath the madcap label. You can hand sew that, um, that little opening shut as well, if you prefer. And you see what I mean? I'm just smoothing down the top over the insert band. It's a little thing, but I think it's a big thing. And it's more comfortable too if that seam is facing up into the hat. And hats are about comfort, to tell you the truth. If you're wearing a hat that's not comfortable you're probably not going to like hats it will leave a lasting impression but this one will be comfortable all right i've closed the seam you'd hardly notice and now trim a few threads off and comes the fun part do i add something to embellish it to finish it off yeah, I think I should. I've got a few ideas. There's buttons. That one, those are sparkly buttons. That would be nice too. I have lots of buttons. There's some red ones. But that's kind of nice. It's a little bit of horse hair with some feathers on a pin. Hmm. And then I have this little flower I made out of fabric. <laughs> love it. What's not to love about this cap, right? It's going to be a great addition to your pattern collection. And hopefully you'll get a chance to make lots of them. If you're going to use it for business, I do have a pattern on our website, www.madcaphats.com that has three graded sizes, which will make it very easy for you to replicate it. But you can see by my collection already, I've done several different trims. Here we have a flower pin that I just made by gathering some scrap fabric with some fishing line, tying it in a knot, using a glue gun, making a little fabric covered button to match the black cord in this hat. So this one's made out of corduroy and flannel. This is fleece. This is this knit fabric that you saw at the beginning of the video. This is like a knit fabric that you could use for a headband. So there's lots of varieties of fabrics that you can use for this cap. And if you want to make it a little bit tighter, you can add some elastic inside the visor band at the back before you close that part up. So in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this and you'll consider subscribing to our channel because we're just getting started. I've got this 36 year career to share with you 
and I'd love to have you on board. Leave comments below, any questions as well, I'll answer them as quickly as I can. So until we meet again, Ileana is going to take us out modeling another version of this hat. Happy sewing. Thanks for watching. Bye.